We got the four stages of the Knicks. Optimism. Underachievement. <laughs> rage. And then rats. <laughs> As everybody scurries about the ship trying to preserve themselves and not drown. Uh, we'll do that a little later. Good God, what a mess. What's happening? TK doing today, bud? You good? good, man. It's Friday. Let's go. Friday not, what? It's the, well, it's Friday not, what? It's not a fool, but it's not football Friday. But it's Friday fool. What do you Friday, mean? Friday fool. fool. Dude, we did it for eight years. Though. I know. I mean, come on. Just, but it's, I'm used to football Friday. Don't try to, don't try to be different it's on the, the first, fan. Dude, it's the first Friday without football. It's always a Friday fool. <laughs> You're a Friday fool. <laughs> Dove, Hoff, what's going on? Everybody good? Yo. All right. So this Aaron Judge stuff is is interesting enough. Mm-hmm. It's interesting enough to to start with that. Now, I know that they made uh, a lot of noise. Uh, good, uh, obviously, your boy, CC, your buddy. Yep, R2C2, uh-huh. with Brian Rucco. Love the name of the pod, by oh, the that's way. Great. That's a great pod name. Rucco's good. CC's good. So they had Judge on yesterday, and he was dishing on his future, which obviously is a big story. Until that contract is signed, Mm -hmm. it ain't signed. Uh, But before we play that and react and obviously give you our take and get calls, 877-337-6666, really what started to get this ball moving, we're going to flash it back to January 19th here on our show on The Fan. We had Sweeney Murdy on, and here's what Sween dropped. What do you think is going to happen with Aaron Judge and the Yankees? Like, what kind of deal is he going to get, and when will it happen? Uh, not till after this season. I think part of the things you're right is that I, I think what's happened now has really hurt him mm-hmm. because when the lockout ends, you're going to be in this big frenzy to try to get a lot. You know, they still need, they need a shortstop for this year, a yeah. first baseman, maybe a center fielder, catcher, another pitcher, all these things for this year. Aaron Judge signing a contract extension is not a priority. Mm. And if you have, what, two or three weeks to get deals done before you start a spring training camp, well, then you know that's not going to happen. As you talked about, having a deal like that happen during the season isn't realistic. Nope. So you wait till the end of the season. And in my mind, that's not a bad thing for the Yankees. What was the one thing you really wanted to see Health. last year? You wanted to see him play. You yeah. wanted to see him stay on the field. Yeah, I hear so you. But just, you- just, just to hear you say Aaron Judge is not a priority, it just makes you like go, oh, really? <laughs> you he can't. Know? Yeah, I mean, listen, he, he's listen, he's face of the franchise, right? But he can't be priority number one mm. when you've got all these holes to fill yeah. and he's under contract. And frankly, mm. I would wait for him to put up another healthy year. It's not like I'm mm. going to get a discount by trying to sign Aaron Judge, yeah. nor do I need one if I'm the New York Yankees. Let's just wait till you get through the season because if you really want him, you're going to have the chance to get him. Okay, and then off of that, and in the ensuing days, we had some, you know, uh, Stevie Cohen might swipe him. Then, of course, we saw the superimposed Mets uniforms on Judge, and <laughs> all the Mets fans were getting giddy and trying to shove it down our throats, and Yankee fans were very territorial. Obviously, he's ours, until he's not. Mm-hmm. Now, listen, by the way, I think that this thing gets resolved. I really do. This is not, to me, a resolve favorably, meaning he's going to remain with the Yankees for a long time. Now, what that contract looks like, don't know. Injury concerns. I'm of the mindset. I'd rather to pump out $50 million a year for five years, just give him a bloated AAV, yeah. then this lengthy uh, contract that will handcuff them in terms of roster maneuverability down the road, like the Ellsbury dopey contract, like the Hicks dopey contract. The difference and what complicates this is that unlike Robinson Cano, who wound up in Seattle, nobody saw that coming, yeah. is that Robinson Cano never sold tickets. Yes. Sweet swing. Good player, never sold tickets. Yeah, it's Judge what, does. It's what we said yesterday. I, I don't know why. How, I don't know how we got on Aaron Judge yesterday, but we had a caller talking about it, and and essentially, you know, you made that you you can make the point, and I did make the point that even if you don't follow baseball closely, you know who Aaron Judge is. He's just an just massive man behemoth in a New York Yankees uniform who. Performs. I mean, he was unhealthy. He had one bad year where he was where he missed a significant amount of time. I want to say it was sixty games or so. But other than that, he's been pretty reliable uh, as a as a as an at, uh, getting his at bats. He had five hundred and fifty of them last year. And while you know, it felt like there were some frustrations throughout the season. He still had thirty nine home runs. Yep. You know what I mean? So Aaron Judge is in his prime right now. He's about to be thirty in in April. I mean, he at least has four or five more years of, of eliteness left in him. And if you're the Yankees and you're not necessarily thinking about selling tickets, but you're thinking about 
given the fan base something to be excited about on a nightly basis, you go see Aaron Judge. Like, you want to see Aaron Judge uh, when, when, as, as a Yankee fan. And if he just slips away, especially if he ends up, as Hoff has been speculating for two months now, with the New York Mets, it just it's going to leave a very sour taste, even if – it's the right move to let him mo- let him go. It's going to leave a very sour taste in Yankees fans' mouths. Eight seven seven three three seven sixty six sixty six. Tiki, it's here to hear on the fan live inside the ta- live inside the Town Fair Tire Studio. We remind you that at Town Fair Tire, you always get the guarantee lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Uh, I mean, listen, it's a sad commentary when Nerlens Noel and Alec Burks are making more money than Aaron Judge. <laughs> I mean, really, just think about that. And I understand that... That makes no damn sense. It's, it's, which is why we're right now with a lockout, and the players are digging in. They're trying to make up, you know, for years of getting fleeced at the negotiating table. I mean, when Aaron Judge was 25 years of age, he made $550,000. Mm-hmm. He won the Rookie of the Year, 52 bombs, an OPS of almost 1,100, second in the MVP, which he would have won if Altuve didn't have, uh, you know, wires and, uh, you know, batteries attached to his chest. And then... At the age of 26, he made 622000 At the age of 27, which I've always thought to be the absolute prime of a baseball player, he made $684,000. That's why a lot of things need to change in baseball. Now, he also went from six eighty to $8.5 million the next year. And, of course, last year he made ten. But this is, this is tough because there's the emotion. And pragmatically, as you yeah. lay this out, you're like, okay, He's, he showed he could play some center field. Yep. He's got easy power everywhere, but especially to right field in that stadium. It obviously suits him well. He's an athlete. He can run. He can throw. He sells tickets. He's low maintenance, but he is going to be 30, and he is injury prone. So, I don't know. I don't want to be a prisoner of the moment, but this very well might equate to the most complex negotiation uh, for the Yankees in recent memory. Yeah. And you the, really think about and, it. And the Yankees. And Jeter was easy. No. Yeah, you know, of course. I mean, what was hard it about was, Jeter? It was a no-brainer. Yeah. It, it, like a lot, most of their stars over the years have been no-brainers with the New York Yankees. Mariano right? was simple. Exactly. Even CeCe. I guess A-Rod was a bit complex for, for a couple of yeah, different but reasons, that, but still. Uh, yeah, but A-Rod was complex because of his own... Um, you know, issues. Corniness. With, well, not, nice I mean, corny. that that too, but also because of the whole steroid thing and, you know, it's his reluctance to stop using it and getting pinched doing it. Yeah. Um, but even with CeCe. suing he, baseball. Yeah, right. But even CeCe at the end, uh-huh. you know, because this we, we were talking about this because Aaron Judge was on CeCe and Ryan Rucco's podcast, RC, R2C2, and it's CeCe at the end. Like, you knew he was not going anywhere else to play his last couple of years of baseball, even if he was – you know, not as elite as he was. He was figuring it out and learning how to pitch in different ways. He's topping out about 92 or 94 sometimes, but he learned how to pitch. But you knew he wasn't going anywhere because he was a star. And he was he was, he was, was the Yankees. They had claimed him. Obviously, he didn't grow up as a Yankee, but they had claimed him. He won a championship with them. And you knew he wasn't going anywhere. I just don't get the feeling that Aaron Judge is not going anywhere, especially when you listen to him talk about how – it, this is going to all play out. Well, let, let's hear it. This is what he told uh, Ruko and CC yesterday. That's one thing kind of leading into this is, you know, especially coming up to the minor leagues, starting your first couple of years of rookie ball, everybody talks about getting a free agency. You want to be a free agent. Um, you want to test the market a little bit, you know, see, you know, see what's out there. Um, but that's one thing that, you know, I've been lucky enough to play in, you know, the best organization, you know, out of all yeah. of them, you know, so who wants to go anywhere else? You know? yeah. But, um, but, that, but that's the thing is, you know, whatever happens, you know, if we get an extension done at some point um, before the season starts, you know, that'd be great. And you know, I'd be completely honored to be able to win pinstripes, you know, for a couple more years. But, you know, if it doesn't happen and this is, you know, my last year, it, you know, I had a lot of great memories and um, you know, I'm always going to, you know, it doesn't matter if it's my last year, first year, you know, I'm going to go out there and play my best and do what I need to do for the city and do it what I need to do for the team. But, um, you know, it's all in God's hands, you know, he's, it's, it's going to work out the way it's supposed to. And, um, you know, I guess why I got I got agents, I got people taking care of that for me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not even worried. Yeah, they shouldn't be worried. But what I would like to see happen, though I know that this is not gonna happen, in an ideal world, and I think most Yankee fans would agree with me, you hammer this thing out before the season. Again, unrealistic, but I'm saying this is what I would love to see happen. Yep. And then shortly before the season opener, you put the C on his chest. 
I actually don't want to see the C. Mm-hmm. I think the C's a little corny. Eh, I think it looks corny. Yeah, but yeah. Hernandez used to wear it with the I I Mattingly Yankees don't uh, I don't know. I don't like to see with the pinstripes. I don't like to see with the gray. You just don't do that. Willie Randolph <laughs> didn't do it. Gidry didn't do it. I don't know. I, I I love it in hockey. I'm okay with it in football. Just I don't love the way it looks on a baseball uniform. Why not? I just don't, I, I just I don't know. <laughs> I just don't like it. I think it looks weird, like crammed in there. Yeah, but especially we, on a uniform like the Yankees yeah, royalty. I'm trying to remember on, what it looked like on, on, on Jeter. Jeter looked fine though. No, I mean, Jeter didn't have to see. No, you don't put the C on there. Yeah, you don't put the C on the pinstripe. So I think what I would love is five years, however much money, don't care, pay him. And, you know, three days before opening day, you know, the I guess he'd be the 10th captain. Would it be number 10? Maybe I'm off 10 or 11. Munson, Mattingly, Randall, whatever. Look it up, please, guys. I think it's 10 or 11. And you announce that he's the captain. Yeah. And we move forward. What I don't want to see happen is, all right, we couldn't strike a deal. We're going to table this till after the season. If that because happens, one he's two Well, no, 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 no. Because what if he gets hurt? What if he pulls a rib cage? And he misses or, you know, the intercostal muscle. Let's get the guy's banged up, I know, which I, is why we're well, here. Well, he is banged up sometimes, but I mean, I don't know why this always fifteenth captain. Fifteen is yeah. it? Fifteen? Be sixteen. This was so. It's, there's been fifteen. Oh, then maybe maybe you know maybe Mattingly was ten. That's right. I saw the Yankeeography again. There you go. Fifteen. My bad. Yeah. Good. So I mean. When he, I forget what I was even saying, but at the end of the day, if, if Aaron about Judge, the table discussions, yeah, so and, if they and table he plays discussions without the and he be and, it, and they play without a contract, you gotta believe that the Yankees, who who Sweeney Murdy correctly identified, have holes. They're not going to be willing to outspend whoever is going to try to come after him. And there's go, there's going to be some team, whether it's si- simply because is he's Aaron Judge. And asses are going to go in seats to watch Aaron Judge. Yeah, they're just going to they're going to pay more than the Yankees are willing to pay. The other thing that Cashman said, and um, this was I don't know when this was, but I was reading this article about it. How they don't pay, they don't pay free agent or pre uh, pay free before their free agency, mm-hmm. and it's happened a couple of times. Over the last couple of years, and they're like, yeah, they got burnt on these things, but they didn't Wait, really about the get Severino burnt. one. Yeah, the Severino, they yeah. didn't really get burned on it. It's four money, years, whatever. forty million. You yeah, know, exactly. seven years, seventy million for for an Aaron Hicks. Mm-hmm. Both those guys are going to be back. I mean, mm-hmm. they could turn out to be really good signings, but in the short term, it feels like, yeah, we we kind of probably shouldn't have paid I those hate guys. The Hicks signing. Severino's going to be good, but keep going. I, but so my point is, so they have done it before. They just haven't done it like they're going to need to do it. With Aaron Judge, who's going to make the somewhere, exorbitant yeah, money? Yeah, exactly. A yeah. hundred and something million dollar, maybe two hundred million dollars, uh-huh. even depending on the length of the deal. So they're reluctant to do this, but they, I mean, this is the Yankees. Yeah, I was just saying, what are we talking about here? Like, when, <laughs> the, when the Yankees need to remember that they're the Yankees? That's what I mean. This is the Yankees. So why we are we are saying the Yankees. we don't pay? We don't pay guys before they're free agents. Okay, then there's exceptions to rule. There are exceptions, but here's the thing: as much as I want to say, you know, be, to remember who you are, start spending money, you know, whatever. Go back to the George Stein. Well, certain parts of the George Steinbrenner yeah. era, not all of them. But I also understand the complexity of this negotiation and the evaluation of who exactly Aaron Judge is. He's not 24. He's going to be 30. That Mm -hmm. needs to be reiterated, okay? And he's hurt a lot. So if I'm the Yankees, why in the world? I've got to see from the other side of the fence here, Teague. So why would I give him a blank check for five years when he might miss 40 games with soft tissue muscle again? Do you think if Aaron Judge... Play because by the way, you could sign him after the season in free agency, and the same thing could happen. You mean meaning the 2023 season? Yes, he could. He sure, could still but if he gets hurt this year, you might be only paying 75 cents on the dollar. If you give if you give him a contract now, mm-hmm. you are really on the wrong side of the negotiating table because he was very good last year. Yeah, he was healthy and his numbers were good, and he just further cemented his. His place in, in Yankee lore. I know it is not the championship yet, but, yeah, but can't you the see, charisma. Yeah, but can't you the, see the can't you see the, Yankee, can't you see the converse of that as well? Go that ahead. if he plays great, then you're if he if he hits fifty five bombs this year and you know bats close to three hundred, you get a, a deal as an eight ninety OPS. You get right? a deal, meaning you get a deal. No, no, no. Meaning if, if you, you sign him now, no, yes, oh, yes, okay, yes, exactly. Yes. But also if you wait. You're, yes, yes, right? you're, but yes. You're paying a premium for now. sure, but that is a chance I would probably be willing to take because if he puts up 
I mean, 55 is nuts. But yeah. say he goes, let us let, let me give you these I mean, numbers. He'd have, to, he'd have to play 150-something games yeah. for that to happen. Let, let me give you this. Let me give you, how about 291, you know, okay. which is, 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 is realistic yep. somewhat. An OPS of, you know, easily over 1,000, comfortably over 1,000. You know, 43 to 47 home runs at 119 or 123 RBIs. Yeah. Gold glove, borderline defense, good on the bases, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I mean. His career OPS, by the way, is, is 9, 90, 94. Exactly. If he does somehow replicate the numbers I just threw out there uh-huh. or approach. Which is know, an elite season. Which is which is MVP stuff, yep. obviously. Uh, then you don't mind cutting that monster check because by all the counts, you will have a very successful season. Now, you still have to pitch. Stan's got to stay healthy. Mm-hmm. Got to figure out first base. Sanchez. I mean, I know that there's other moving parts, but if Aaron Judge plays 151 games and puts up the numbers I threw out there, and Garrett Cole is healthy, and Severino's right, and you make a move for a first baseman, which I submit that they will, either Olsen or Freeman, and I believe it's going to be Olsen. I believe that's the more prudent move. Younger, cheaper. Um, Yanks are going to win 90 games. Yeah. Now, do they win a world? I don't know because it's the randomness of October. But at that point, it reinforces his value to the franchise because you cannot deny his place in the city. And those two are connected. You know, all my son wants, I mean, he loves the other guys too. Gio, he loves everyone. Judge, Hmm. judge, (laughs) judge. I mean, Judge is like a mythical figure yeah. to little boys and girls. I can only imagine. I mean, part of it's if I was my son's it, age, part my of it's because he's just larger than life. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he just feels like a like a superhero. Yeah, right? and he's, but he's a gentle giant, and that's important. He's got an easy smile. Uh, he embraces his role uh, at, at at the at the front of the Yankee table. He's um, he's not the best quote, but then again, neither was Jeter. Mm-hmm. But the way he comports himself, he just. Everything works. The only issue is that he's injury prone and he's going to be 30. So, Yankee fans, what would you do? 877 337 6666. 